This is the Shine On You Crazy Daisy podcast, and I'm your host, Trudy Simmons from the Daisy Chain Group, providing platforms and opportunities for business women to be seen and heard. This platform is for the women entrepreneurs that want to hear the real stories of what it takes to be yourself and run a business with all the different hats that you might have to wear. Come and join the Shine On You Crazy Daisy membership, offering online networking, co-working, collaboration, and monthly masterclasses for you to grow your knowledge. Go to the daisychaingroup.com for more information. These are the platforms to hear and share the stories of the tenacious, the rebellious, and the resilient women that are working towards the future that they build for themselves and their families. Hello and welcome to the Shine On You Crazy Daisy podcast and I am thrilled and excited to introduce you to Emma Balin from Shared Harmonies CIC. Emma, thank you so much for being involved in the book and the podcast. Please tell us about your business. Hi, I'm really excited to be here. Uh, So Shared Harmonies aims to improve confidence, communication and well-being in companies and communities. And we look at things like leadership, organizational development, um, team building, well-being in organizations. And then as a CIC, we reinvest all our profits working with um, people in communities that are struggling with a long term health or well-being condition. It's amazing. I can't wait to have this conversation with you. But what amazes me with the start of your chapter is that. You had a dream at the beginning of being a star in a musical because you love to sing. So why didn't that happen? So I think it's still a dream. (laughs) (laughs) One day I will be, I'll sing in a musical. Um, I think I I always, as a child, I was, I I, I loved singing. I just, I loved it. But I was really, really lucky as well. So I was um, a lot of people get told as their children that they that they can't sing. So so many people I work with get their voices shut down when they're really young with lifelong impacts. I actually had the exact opposite experience. So a teacher pulled me aside at the end of an assembly when I was about five and said, you've got a lovely voice. Would you sing a solo in the school play? And so like. I wish I could go back and thank that teacher now for changing my entire life. Um, but so I, I had that belief and I, and it instilled in me a massive passion and I loved acting. I loved, I loved kind of being, you know, in the, in, in the, in the center of attention, I used to love putting on like performances, but I came from, you know, kind of, upper working class family in the north you know nobody nobody went on to be a singer or an actor or a whatever you know that wasn't that wasn't something that felt possible I think not Mm. you know as a child I probably had you know like we all you know you go around and ask kids what they want to be and it's like an astronaut and you know it's all these things but then we are often surrounded by a culture that kind of makes us believe that that's, those dreams are not possible. And I guess my parents' generation were kind of that generation that, you know, didn't go to university and really wanted that for their for their children. So it was like there was a big emphasis on, um, you know, you're clever enough to have an academic career. So think mm-hmm. about what that is. And, and so that that kind of became the the focus really. So I did bits of, I always sang, I I kept that going, but not as a career. And in fact, I was in, um, I was in a lot of like kind of, you know, cover bands and various things. And for a while I was in, um, I was in a duo and we were actually doing really well. And we were getting bookings kind of four or five times a week. And, but at the same time I was training to be a youth and community worker. And I had, and so a lot of that work was evenings and weekends. And I literally remember that moment where I had to make a choice. Do I choose to focus on my singing or do I choose my career and chose my career? Um, But I don't regret it. I don't, I don't regret it now because it's both those things combined that have led me to create shared harmony. This is the brilliance of having these conversations and reading these chapters is so many people get stuck in, that they haven't done what they wanted to do but actually if we don't have the stories behind us that lead us to where we are 
everything that would seem that you've done has led you to to starting this passion of yours and having your business be your passion when you started the business that was all about your passion you said that you found lots of places for support how did you find them that's a, a really interesting question because I'm not I'm not entirely sure I can remember where the first one came from um I think actually I think it might have been word of mouth I think um I was connected to somebody else who had run um a CIC community interest company um and who had received support through the school for social entrepreneurs and suggested that I apply um and and then you, you tend to find that the more the more things you're connected into the more things you find out about mm -hmm. so I I mean I feel so I, I won't say lucky because I took steps to kind of help create a lot of that but I feel so grateful mm. um, to have received the, the the support I've had through both the programs that I've been part of but then more so the networks of people that I met through being part of that um so I talk in my chapter about finding your tribe and and I know that that's a real passion of yours as well and and it's so important you know that I recently a number of us in the social enterprise world were all applying for a, a a recent grant around social enterprises and so in effect we were all in competition with each other but this lovely network of people that was on the school for social entrepreneurs scale up program yeah we're send we're helping each other you know it was like i found this out about the application process i've heard this has anybody heard this good luck everybody i'm really rooting for you and when you are a, a, either a sole entrepreneur or the or the leader of a small business, where else do you get yeah. that from? You know, it's so important. It's and, so important. And it's so undervalued. And the people yeah. that don't do networking don't find out where their tribe is and then wonder why they feel so alone. There is, you don't have to feel like that. And oh. what I loved reading in yours was not just, obviously I run network events. So I love that you found things through networking events, um, but it's not just the tribe that you found, it's the grants that you found and the people that reached out to help you. And that all comes from being very sure about your values, your, your purpose, your passion, what you're going for. So it yeah. all happens at the right time and it's absolutely and and I think um so I think there's two you've just said two things then that really resonate with me so the one is um not being afraid to ask mm -hmm. and that's been huge for me um being part of those networks that make it okay to ask and learning that because I think so often we see things in the in media don't we social media where people present their business as being as being the complete picture so we know exactly what we're doing and and to an extent you have to present your business like that but then there is no leader in any business i would absolutely guarantee even at the highest level mm -hmm. of the biggest businesses that don't face challenges they do not know how to overcome yeah. and so everybody needs to ask for help so there's that and being part of those tribes and networks and being able to ask for help is what enables you to then find that next bit of support whether it be a support program you know and I've I've been on a few and they've all given me different things and all been amazing in their own way or that little nugget of advice or that new connection but the other thing you said as well then was about things come at the right time and I'm a, I my other big thing is is has been learning to listen to me learning to listen to my intuition not the nagging voice in your head, you know, the, the one that's the doubter, but like really feeling into what feels right. And when I've done that, that is when I have found everything has come at the right time. Everything has come in the right way. And it's been, it's the way that I now choose to, to, to run my business and, and live my life. This is the brilliance because you describe um, being right where I was meant to be and completely out of my depth. And I read that sentence and I went back and said, did she just say that? Because it is so perfect, perfectly imperfect in the way that we feel in our businesses so much of the time, right where I'm meant to be, but completely out of my depth. So but, but what do you do at that point? Because you've just touched on a couple of things. But what do you do when you feel that? 
So I think I think so many of us start our businesses because we've got a passion. So for me, it was I had a passion to improve well-being and connection. And I wanted to do it through singing because that was my other passion. And I had this brilliant idea. I knew it was going to work. I tested it. But I had I'd never run a business. I'd been employed all my life. So I had some experience of writing grants. I'd been a team leader. So I had some of the skills, but I, I didn't do marketing. I was an absolute tech for, you know, like how, how do you run a business? And I think that comes back. So again, I think that comes back to that thing of not being afraid to ask not, and not being afraid to say, mm-hmm. actually, I don't know this because my experience is as soon as you do know it, you will uncover the next thing that you yeah. don't know. Yeah. And uh, so then you've got to overcome that yeah. to get to the next thing you don't know. It and just it's, keeps going. <laughs> it does. It's a constant cycle as your business grows and develops. And and so I think it's I think it's being able to to expand your awareness and mm. and put those questions out there. And I, you know, coming back to your point, net, networking is one of the most brilliant places you will you will do that because mm-hmm. I think people will be surprised how keen people are to give back because most of us have been on the receiving end of that support and guidance at some point. So I know me personally, I've I've offered that back to lots of people. I'm not saying that I know everything by any stretch, but I have definitely learned things that other people are, are still struggling mm-hmm. with. And I got advice and guidance, so I'm I'm so keen to give yeah. that back. But and the other thing that you did say about um, what you do at that point is looking for opportunities, because yeah. there is always somebody reaching out to you in some way or something that get put in your path of, oh, that's what I'm meant to do. And it's just keeping your eyes open for those opportunities. Absolutely. What is one lesson you've learned that you would want every entrepreneur to know? There are so many, and I think I cover about 10 in my chapter. Yeah. But for me, probably the, the biggest one is, is believing in yourself. Mm. So it is not saying that you need to know everything all the time, because as, as we've just discussed, it's a constant learning journey. But if you do not believe with passion, like really believe, in yourself and in your ability to create amazing things nobody else will you know I I really believe that what we put out what we project out into the world is what we get back and so if you are projecting constantly fear doubt insecurity Mm -hmm. that is how people will respond to you but if you believe in yourself people will respond to that and people that. will believe in you. And I, it's so fundamental to me. And, and so all those other things, finding your tribe, all that other yeah. stuff will help you do that. Mm. But that is the key for me. It is. What's your favorite business book? Um, so I have um, about 15 business books on my windowsill that um, faces my desk that um, I've read little snippets from, but never read all of them. But I think my I have I have a couple of 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 books that I've read um in kind of my life that mm-hmm. have actually influenced the way that I live my life and the way that I run my business. Um so I'm a huge um fan of Paolo Kaleo and um the first book of his I ever read was The Alchemist, but I've mm-hmm. gone on to read lots more. And there was a book that I read um, a few years ago that I've since read a number of times, which is called The 40 Rules of Love by um Elif Shafak and both of those really resonate with me and I think the messages in those that really resonate with me again is that is is learning to listen to your heart learning to be who you were born to be yeah and learning to find your your life's purpose because I just believe that so often so many people end up looking back and thinking how 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 did my life end up like this how how am I doing these things every day that I never wanted to do that I still don't want to do why am I all these things to all these other people and the me yeah is is somehow lost under all that yeah and so bringing it back to who who am I what what makes my heart sing what drives my passion 
you know what what is my purpose and and being able to keep tapping into that intuition and um and and finding that within yourself mm. then enables you to project that out into the world and create amazing things uh, so amazing emma what an incredible what an incredible passion you have for what you do but also i think for business and uh, I can't wait for people to read your chapter because there is gold after gold in there of the, the lessons you've learned and the way that you've navigated things to be able to do what your passion is, which is to run a successful business so that you give back to the community. And that is just it's it's beautiful and it's a value that we share. And and I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for watching. If you like what you saw, please like the video and click the subscribe button for this channel for more inspiration. If you're a businesswoman looking for that community that will support you and lift you up, come and join the Shine On You Crazy Daisy membership, offering online networking, co-working, collaboration and monthly masterclasses to grow your knowledge. Go to the daisychaingroup.com for more information. And for even more inspiration, please go to the link under the video and get your copy of the Shine New Crazy Daisy series of books with inspirational and motivating stories from businesswomen around the world.